This is my BSA Spitfire Mark III, which I bought last year, and I've done about 50 miles on it so far. Oh, for a number of reasons, you know, walking the dog, gardening, family, and the other three project bikes I've got. It's uh, never been easy to start, but a few weeks ago, on a nice sunny day, I decided to get it out and go for a ride, and would it start? Would it buggery? That's a technical term, by the way. So, in exasperation, I got my Honda 404 out, and that refused to start too, and is the subject of a previous posting. So, back to the basics with this one. Plugs clean, check. Spark, check. Well, I say spark seemed okay, but after my leg cramped up from all the constant kicking, I decided to move the coils by way of making a new bracket as they were touching the air filters. Uh, and in turn, this meant that I needed to make up some new HT leads, which I did, and uh, I used the crimpon style uh, coil ends and soldered them in place as well. Um, unfortunately, the bike still refused to start, so the next thing was to take the carburetors off and uh, put them through an ultrasonic cleaner and uh, here's a video of me stripping down these carburettors. This is the Wassel 9 slash 30 carburettor which is supposed to be identical to the uh, Amal uh, concentric carburettor. Um, as you can see I'd already taken out the uh, slide which just held in by two screws. That bottom plug just comes off and it's just supposed to give you access to the uh, main jet I believe although I'll take the bowl off the bottom. This is the throttle stop. I'm just seeing where it's set by winding it all the way in and then backing it off to where the position it was. On this one it was about five turns where the one on the right hand side when I dismantled that was more like ten. So that's something that I want to check as well. I mean this bike was running on these 30s although I do notice that in the spec they should maybe have 32s on but uh, Anyway, that being that, that's what it was fitted with, and that's what helped it run. This is the pilot air screw, again just checking to see what that's set at. Um, it was set at a one and a half turns, which is bang on where it should be, whereas the one on the other side was set to three or four out, which is a little bit too much according to the specification. Um, whether it's been fiddled with to get it going by the previous builder I don't know but uh, anyway I'm taking it out and it's all going to be cleaned and checked. The pointy one. So the next stage is just to take the petrol union off and check the filter make sure that that's all clean and it's not gunged up with ethanol based petrol which it wasn't um, and then the float bowl can come off these carburettors, these modern ones by Wassel, and I believe that the Amels are the same now. The actual floats themselves are designed to be puncture proof and um, ethanol resistant. Um, I've heard through the forums that apparently here in the UK, Esso produce an ethanol free petrol. And after all the troubles I've been having, having starting my bikes, I'm considering whether I should actually start using that type of fuel in all my bikes. The float bowl comes off fairly easily and the gasket's just taken off. Just being careful not to rip it as I just want to reuse that one. As I say these carburetors are virtually new. And then you've got the uh, pile, sorry, the float needle there coming out which is just held in by that little clip, little brass thing there. And the floats all look in perfect condition. As I say, um, they are supposed to be ethanol resistant and puncture proof. So just whipping out the uh, pilot jet there. It's the pilot jet. Gasket. Ooh, there's the rubber as well there. That's come out with the gasket.
So just whipping out the main jet holder and the needle jet. So that's the main jet coming off the bottom and the top part of that contains the needle jet as well. All these parts are going to go into the parts washer, the ultrasonic thing. It uh, came from Aldi, it was about £30 and it's a friend of mine's and I'm just using it to try it. I've never used one in the past and it seemed to work pretty well. Although I did look at all these components, they all seemed really clean anyway. And I used a guitar string, a 9 gauge guitar string just to poke through all the holes to make sure there were no blockages and no debris. But to be honest, the carburetors were very, very clean. I'm of the opinion that the problem lies elsewhere, but I hope you've got something out of seeing these uh, carburetors stripped down and perhaps they're not as intimidating as we all think they are. Um, certainly it's the first time I've pulled one down. I've always been nervous in the past, but uh, I was quite happy to do this one. And I'll show you what happens when I'll put it back together.